Hi there everyone and welcome back to the channel. I am super excited to be able to make this video because today we are going to be looking at one of the most disruptive technologies ever to enter the world of 65mm FPV tiny whoops, certainly since Express LRS and perhaps since ever. I am of course talking about the brand new HD0 1S AIO flight controller. This takes a 1S ESC, a flight controller, an HD0 VTX and a 2.4 GHz Express LRS receiver and integrates it all into a single board that lets you get a 65mm whoop like this with digital with HD0 under 20 grams. In this video, I'm going to be taking you through all of the specs, all of the features. I'm going to be helping you with the setup and the tune of this guy because there's no black box on this board. So I'm going to be helping you out with the tune. And of course, we're going to be comparing it against my favorite analog tiny whoop to see, is it worth the upgrade? How much does this HD0 digital video system bring to our tiny whoops? It's a lot to cover in one video. I'm not gonna waste any more time with the intro. Let's dive right into the testing. If you're interested to try any of the products I'm gonna talk about in this video, I'll put links down in the video description. And if you use those links, it does help support me to make more videos like this for everyone, and it doesn't cost you anything. It is really win-win. So please do consider using those links if you possibly can. I said this would be a shootout, so let me introduce you to the competitors. And representing analog, we have the new Beta FPV Air G4 65 millimeter Champions Edition. Now I made a video about the original 65 millimeter Air G4 and um, Beta FPV have basically taken my feedback and the feedback from some other tiny whip pilots and made this Champions Edition version to try and really make the best possible analog tiny whip they can and they have really succeeded so compared to the original air g4 65 millimeter we've gone from the g4 four in one flight controller to the five in one with the built-in express lrs 2.4 gigahertz receiver and the motors have also been upgraded from 0702 23000 kv to 0702 30000 kv and these motors are among the best 0702 tiny whip motors i have ever tested so to have them on a tiny whip is really fantastic this is as close to perfect an analog tiny whoop as I could imagine anyone making. So it's going to be really stiff competition for whatever it goes up against. Representing HD0, we have a very similar quad with a few key components changed. We're using the same motors and the same frame, but the flight controller has been swapped to the HD0 AIO and the camera has been swapped from the Beta FPV CO3 to the HD0 Lux. Both quads are also using exactly the same props, the HQ Ultralight 31mm, so this should be a pretty fair shootout between analog and digital, so let's see how they do. Let's start by taking some weights, and the analog tiny whoop comes in at 17.76 grams. Dry, if you choose to fly with a 260 milliamp hour LiPo, that brings it up to 24.79 grams, and if you choose to go with a slightly larger 300 milliamp hour LiPo, that's going to come in at 26.04 grams. If we compare that to the HD0 Tiny Whoop, you can see it's a little bit heavier. This one comes in at 20.18 grams dry, 27.22 grams with a 260 milliamp hour LiPo, and 28.5 grams with a 300 milliamp hour LiPo. Now that we've looked over both of these quads on the bench, it's time to take them both for a fly and compare the flight experience between analog and HD0. Hopefully seeing some flight footage from these two systems back to back has given you an idea of the difference in flight experience between analog and the new HD0 AIO. The HD0 system is a bit heavier, about 2.4 grams or so, and more expensive, we'll talk more about that later. 
but that extra weight and cost does buy you a lot in terms of visual fidelity, clarity in the image, color accuracy, and low light performance. It is definitely noticeable when you're flying that you can see a lot more and that what you're seeing looks nicer and more realistic. So that is a big tick in HD Zero's column in this test. Now let's take a look at the VTX output power performance of these two systems. While I have the HD Zero AIO on the bench, I might as well measure the VTX output power. Now the board supports 25 milliwatts and 200 milliwatts output power, and I'm gonna measure it by connecting it to my ADL5902 True RMS RF power meter. If I power up the VTX by plugging in a battery, the RF power emitted by the VTX will be detected by the ADL5902, and you can see the raw power output reading jumping up there. So I'll measure the output power on both the 25 and 200 milliwatt modes for all of the race band channels, and uh, after I've measured it, we can look at the data. So let's compare the VTX output power of the new HG0 AIO to the best analog AIO that I've tested so far, which is the Beta FPV Air G4 5-in-1. So the Air G4 5-in-1 on the 25 milliwatt setting delivers pretty much exactly 25 milliwatts across all of the race band channels. And that's what you want. You want consistent performance no matter what channel you're on so that you're always going to get the same experience of flying whether you're on race band 1 or race band 8. The HD0 AIO is also phenomenally consistent across all of the race band channels, delivering almost exactly 40 milliwatts on all the channels. And that's a little bit more than the 25 milliwatt setting, but the fact that it's really consistent is exactly what you need because no matter what channel you're on, you're gonna get the same RF performance. If we then go up to the HD0 AIO on its 200 milliwatt setting, that's delivering anywhere from about 140 to 160 milliwatts, depending on what channel you're on. And again, this is really very consistent across all of the race band channels with only about a 10% spread or so. So that's really good to see. At about 160, 150 milliwatts, something like that, you're getting about four times the output power of the 25 milliwatt setting, so that's gonna give you twice the range. It's not quite as much as the 200 milliwatt claimed output power, but it is very, very consistent, so that's good. You're gonna be getting the same experience across all the channels. Obviously, the analog VTXs, they usually have more output power, so um, the Air G4 delivers a bit more on its 200 milliwatt setting, about 250 milliwatts, and on 400 milliwatts, it's delivering, again, more than that about 450 milliwatts or so. Um, but on that higher setting, it is less consistent. Just uh, on the higher race band channels, the power falls off a bit more. So now that we've looked at all of the test data, it's time to talk about tuning. And I know what you're thinking, how can I tune a tiny whoop with the HD0 AIO when it doesn't have a black box chip? And the answer is you can't really. And that's why I wanna provide a tune that you can use with this flight controller on your tiny whoop. And the way I'm gonna produce that tune is by similarity. I'm not gonna tune this drone. I'm gonna tune this drone. This drone has exactly the same props and motors. It has a flight controller with a black box chip. And the only difference is that it weighs about 2.4 grams less than the HD Zero drone. So I've 3D printed a 2.4 gram mass. And I'm just gonna stick this mass onto this drone and then we're gonna be able to tune it and it should perform exactly the same as the HD Zero drone in terms of flight performance. After I've got the tune, I can just transfer it over and I'll also make a preset for you guys to use in beta flight as well. With this test mass now installed, these two quads now weigh exactly the same to the nearest hundredth of a gram or so. If you're interested in learning how to PID tune any quad for yourself, either a tiny whoop or something larger, then I'll put links down in the video description to my Betaflight 4.5 tuning guide, which is available in PDF format on my Patreon, and also I'll link to my video tuning series as well. If you're just after the preset, by now it's probably available in the Betaflight presets tab, just search AOS 65 millimeter. But if for any reason it's not, I'll put details down in the video description. So now we come to the part of the video where we talk about pricing. And I'm British, so I hate talking about money, but it has to be done. Let's start with the analog system. If you're gonna buy the Air G4 5-in-1 flight controller, that's gonna set you back $50. If you add on the Beta FPV C3 camera, that's another $20. So the camera and flight controller is gonna set you back 70 bucks. If you want to buy the whole drone, a bind and fly, then the Air 65 Racing, 
will set you back $95. And this Champions Edition with the upgraded motors is going to set you back a little more, $105. Let's compare that to the HD0 system. So the HD0 board on its own is $99. And if you also want to add the HD0 Lux camera, that's going to set you back another $45. So we're looking at $145 for the camera and the flight controller, which is pretty much exactly double the analog system from Beta FPV. If you want to buy a bind and fly, something like the HD0 Mob 6 Race, that is going to set you back $190, which is near enough exactly double the uh, Air 65 cost for the analog tiny whoop from Beta FPV. Of course, this doesn't take into account the cost of the goggles, which is a whole different ball game in terms of price. I would say that if you already have a set of HD0 goggles, then it's a no brainer to pick up an HD0 AIO and a Lux camera and upgrade one of your tiny whoops to HD0 to try it out. I think you'll really enjoy the improved video quality from the system in a tiny whoop and it'll make you know whooping around the house even more fun. If however you're someone who is all analog and is thinking about whether to upgrade to HD0 and is thinking about it for tiny whoops, then what I would say is try and find someone who's already got the system and try it out and see how much you enjoy the HD0 system in terms of the quality of the video. If you really like it, then I would say with this new AIO, it might be worth taking the plunge and converting your tiny whoops over to digital. Now the weight has come down to a level where it's very close between analog and digital in terms of weight, unless of course you're building something super, super lightweight, but you can get the HD0 system under 20 grams quite easily. And at that point it becomes really competitive with the sort of ordinary tiny whoops that people are flying around today. Let me know what you think down in the comments and let me know what you think if you're a racer and also if you're not a racer because I know that racers will be very concerned about weight, and rightly so, but if you're not a racer, maybe that 2.4 grams isn't such a big deal for you and you'd much rather prefer having the clearer video. I'd love to hear what you think. I hope you enjoyed the video and the comparison. And until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.